Hello and welcome to today's Python tutorial. Today we are going to talk about input validation. That is how we can validate the input that we get from a user if they have entered the correct number or format, if we ask them for an email and if that email was in correct format or not. So we are going to use this module, Pi Input Plus, which was developed by the writer of this book, Automate the Boring Stuff. So a lot of people know this book. And the writer is Al Swigart. And you can find this book, which is free to read under a Creative Commons license, on this website, automatetheboringstuff.com. And you see he has written a lot of other books, amazing books, a lot of projects in them. It's hands-on. It's awesome. You can see all the chapters here and the additional content as well. So this is amazing, this book. Now, let's get back to what it is. So... Uh, one example of what we are going to make today, you can find it here. Now, if I run my program, by the way, I'm using Replit.com to create this IDE or environment for Python. And I'm going to show you how to install those packages. So if I run, I'm asked to enter my email. If I just say Vahid.com, which is not an email, right? And press enter, it validates it. And it realizes that this is an invalid format. So it says it's not a valid email address. Remember, this has been generated by Pi Input Plus, not me. And then again, I'm asked to write my email. It's like a while loop. So it goes until I provide a correct form. So let's just save now Vahid. Uh, oops. Well, I messed up. Vahid at gmail.com and then this goes away that is it gets saved into a variable and look at this line of code this is only one line of code no error handling nothing so I've just used the, this method by Pi input plus which is input email and then it tries to recognize uh, that if it's a correct email or not if it is not correct it throws this error now we have a lot to talk about now but let's get to how to start so to start you need to go to uh, if you're using replit of course you can go to packages and here look for pi input plus and then i've already installed it that's why you can see this bin here but you can click on install package it will be installed if you're using your local machine, I mean laptop, you can go to the shell or terminal and then write down pip install pi input plus and press enter and then it would install the requirements. So um, now let's see uh, how we can know more about this module. So let's go to the documentation and you can see that it provides uh, input like functions with additional validation features so this is the way you install it and um, this is the way you import it you can give it a nickname or an alias as pi ip or p or whatever you want now all of these functions begin with input the word input now let's see how they work so let's Im imagine that i want to have a number from the user and for that to happen i should use pi ip because this is the same as this one it's just the nickname an alias so pi ip dot there is a method input num capital n and inside that i can ask the user to enter age let's say now if i press uh, run let's see what happens it's very simple just like input function in Python, right? But if I enter something like D, press enter. You see, D is not a number. And again, I'm prompted to provide something else. You see, until I provide some number, whatever number it is, and now it's done. Now 25.8 has been stored into num. So this is one way. Now, another way is some people might think that, okay, so why not simply use the input function like input and then here say enter age. This is the same, isn't it? And then we get a string, of course, in Python. So we simply use integer to turn this into an integer here. But 
we don't get these validations we don't get these error handling so it takes us a lot of effort so that's one thing now I can also put minimum and maximum here so I can say the age should be greater than capital T greater than uh, equals let's say 18 so if someone's below 18 it would not accept this number so now let's run and enter age if I say 17 for example press enter number must be greater than 18 and if I press 20 it goes away it works so this is the way you can set limits I can also say less than let's say it's a cartoon for only for I don't know people below 18 this is stupid but anyways so you can also say less than 18 and if I run this and if I say 19 this should not work number must be less than 18 I can also use min I can say min 12 and then comma less than 18 that is minimum is 12 and it should be less than 18 that is a number between these two so if I run this now and if I enter something like I don't know a 10 it should not work number must be at minimum 12 and if I enter something in between it works the same is with max I can also have a max here I can say max and the same thing happens again you see no problem so this is very very interesting and useful another feature is useful is limit so I can limit the attempts of the user at giving input let's say I limit it to two attempts or tries and if I run this I have only two chances of entering some number so if I say F F is not a number that was my first chance the second chance if I blow it that's it so if I say T you see I get an error so I don't get more than two chances okay so this is about um, number but sometimes we just don't need just number maybe we need an integer so I say int now if I run and if I say 28.5 it says 28.5 is not an integer enter age again 28 okay done now sometimes I need floats so I enter float like this and the most interesting one is email that you just saw input email capital M so if I want the user to provide their email for me if I run and here if I say v.com press enter is not a valid email address so I say v at mail.com enter and then it's done cool right now another one which is also very interesting is menu so this menu is well as the name suggests is for menus and, and multiple choice uh, questions so inside this I can have a list of items or choices let's say Python for example is one choice the second choice might be Java the third one might be PHP and the last one might be JavaScript now if I run look at what happens please select one of the following Python Java PHP JavaScript you see this line I never wrote this and also these asterisks and these choices so what happens if I choose one let's see let's print num which is whatever I choose now it, let's run this again so let's say choose one okay maybe I want to choose JavaScript but with lowercase js let's see if it works and if I press enter it works it prints out my choice so this is great for uh, multiple choice questions right now another thing is uh, maybe I need numbers like one two three four like choices of numbers so I can give it another argument here comma and I say numbered equals true now if I run this now let's see what happens look one two three four now I have numbers as well as words so if I choose one it should give me Python you see and if I choose Python it should again give me Python 
both work now great so let's add a question here let's say uh, print for example the most popular language well I mean programming language of course um, and JavaScript is the most used let's say technology uh, okay but let's not uh, argue about that so let's say if if num which is what the user says equals js then print correct else print incorrect you're gonna see how easy it is to make a multiple choice question now so let's run this so most proper language so let's say I go for Java for example or just two easier huh? number two incorrect okay let's do it again uh, most proper language let's say four correct you see so uh, this is a great feature that uh, they provide for us in Pi Input Plus. You can also use regex if you want to, but you can see the whole documentation here. But that was basically uh, most of the things that you might find useful. And you can see also for daytime as well, by the way, um, input month and some other stuff here. It's also very interesting to see. Yeah. Uh, well, I think that's um, basically it. So that was it. Don't forget to uh, get this book. It's amazing. It's free online. You can read it. There's also a Udemy course by the same author. Uh, it, it is great here, like course on Udemy. It's amazing. So thank you for uh, watching and listening.